There is a fundamental flaw with Skull and Bones. On the surface, it's like a shiny new penny. Looks the business and sounds pretty alright too. You'd think Ubisoft was onto a winner, wouldn't you? We're talking a full-on pirate caper here, sailing the high seas, giving the Brits what for, and nicking everything, not now down to the deck. In a world starved of decent pirate games, this should have been the dog's bollocks. So, how did Ubisoft cock it up so royally? Well, gather around my little troublemakers, because here's the deal. The gameplay is about as enjoyable as a pint of flat lager. If there ever comes a day where you've got to convince a jury of hardcore gamers that fancy graphics ain't worth a toss without solid gameplay, Skull and Bones will be your exhibit A. So put up a chair, put the kettle on, and grab a cuppa as we explain all in today's review. Skull and Bones development has been a right circus, delayed more times than the flight on Spirit Airlines, the kind that promises the world and delivers you half an hour late to your own funeral. Each beta test was like watching a little glimmer of hope get flushed down the shitter with the gameplay remaining the same. And Ubisoft, stubborn as a mule they were, sticking to their guns and not giving a monkeys about what anyone else thought. Now in the mad world of YouTube, it's a piece of cake to slap on a clickbait title, join the mob, slap something off for a few extra views but I'm gonna try and keep it fair here because I'm not about jumping on bandwagons for the sake of it so hold tight because I do promise there's plenty of positive coming up later in the review but for now let's dive into the nitty gritty of why this game is fundamentally flawed. Being a pirate and having your own ship is like being the king of your own dodgy East End pub. It's absolute gold and it's why pirate games are such a fascinating genre where not enough examples exist. In a pirate world, we want to deck out our vessel, make it a proper menace on the high seas, and in theory stir up trouble wherever we drop anchor. The thrill of battling mother nature is what gets our blood pumping to our little meat. Sea of Thieves then has been showing us how it's been done for years, riding the waves, dodging storms and battling other player ships. Skull and Bones comes along though, and it turns it all into a bit of an arcade game, with as much depth as a puddle of piss. Aiming and firing your cannons is simple where all you have to do is hold down the mouse button and swing your targeting reticule with ease as if it's on a hydraulic platform. The cannonballs, they hit with the speed of a bullet train, making you wonder if you're in a pirate game or playing a first person shooter with machine guns. As for harvesting loot, it's a simple QTE event, which frankly is nonsense. You won't be disembarking to take over this settlement, instead you sit there aimlessly shooting at that town and wait for ship reinforcements which you can then dispatch with ease. And don't get me started on the ship damage, it's like throwing darts in the dark, doesn't matter where you hit, just lob them over and hope for the best. The game's practically holding your hand throughout, lighting up targets like Times Square, telling you where to hit, or is it actually telling me where to avoid as it might be precious cargo, who bloody knows. Either way, it takes all the thinking out of your control and the visual feedback of damage ships are few and far between. In comparison, Sea of Thieves at least makes you work for your loot with tactics and a bit of elbow grease needed such as learning to shoot below the waterline to create panic and rupture the hull as water rushes in or using chain shots to incapacitate ships as they are left lumbering in a storm. But in Skull and Bones, you lose not because you're crap at aiming but because you're outnumbered. Turning your ship feels like you're cheating too, like you've nicked a speedboat for a joyride rather than piloting a hefty galleon that requires skill. Go head first into a rock, no problem. It's a mere scrape at best. Get up close to enemies and it's all press R to execute a skill. There is no skill required here of course, no fuss. Just tap the R button and watch the fireworks as your crewmates either fire unmissable musket rounds to weaken the enemy ship, or they board an enemy vessel where you automatically win the fight with a small cutscene. There is no active battle here where you play a part. Then comes the weather, arguably the greatest enemy in any pirate game where you battle the elements. I purposely sailed towards storms in the hope of some spectacular moments, and whilst they look decent, they didn't add any additional challenge where your ship doesn't hit rogue waves and takes on damage, and before long, you never once really feel threatened by them. But here's the painful admission, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It did it all, sailing, 
fighting, weathering the storm, 10 times better even though it's 10 years old. It had atmosphere, something Skull and Bones couldn't find with a map and a compass. Comparing the two is like putting a rowboat against the Queen's yacht. It's laughable. And the worst bit, Skull and Bones feels like it's been dumbed down for a mobile game, not a grand adventure on the high seas. Sea of Thieves ain't perfect, don't get me wrong, but at least it's got heart. Skull and Bones had a blueprint, a treasure map from Black Flag, but they chucked it overboard and basically told us to all go f*** ourselves. Now we're left with an open world game that ironically feels like it's an on rails naval simulator. Once you look past the fundamentals of sailing, looting, combat and pillaging, you start to notice the other bits on offer here. And fair play, it ain't half bad. Yes, you've got cutscenes with a story as basic as a Bud Light, but for an online rumble like this where it's not necessary, it is nonetheless appreciated. The loot's as plentiful as pigeons in Trafalgar Square and there's trading to be done. Snap Tagging the rare stuff lets you beef up your ship with all sorts of fancy gear, which is pretty much where the party's at. Endgame wise, you'll unlock new ships, new weaponry, and of course, attire. The path to be the best on the sea is really what this game is all about. You'll stumble upon loads of side gigs and bounty hunting jaunts too, all sending you off to distant lands to be the biggest menace since the craze. Is where Skull and Bones manages to earn back some respect, because underneath it all, there's a decent game here with big it's that actually work a treat. As for the online malarkey, it's a bit early days for me to be laying down the law, so take what I say here with a big dollop of salt and watch closely over the coming weeks before passing final judgment yourself. But I've got to lay it on the line. I'm not too sure what the online element adds to the mix here. In Sea of Thieves, you've got that real edge of your seat vibe, worried some sneaky sod is lurking below deck to nick your loot or decimate your voyage. But in Skull and Bones, the tension's missing because fundamentally, the combat is missing. And so any online battles, they just feel a bit redundant. It makes me wonder then, what if they chucked the multiplayer overboard and steered towards a proper solo voyage? Could it have been the Black Flag successor that we've all been gagging for? Still, fair's fair, let's see how it shapes up once the servers fill out and the scuffles get going proper. Tip your hat to the graphics too. Skull and Bones does a pretty decent job here. The ships are a sight to behold, decked out with all the trimmings, rigging, cargo and sailors, mini about like it's payday at the welfare centre. You've got to give it to Ubisoft for the attention to detail. It's top notch and I've always been impressed with the artists and how much they can pack into the game visually. They really are a talented bunch. But as is always the case with a Ubisoft game, when I say the graphics are decent, I mean they're like a weak carry. You were hoping for something to really knock your socks off, but here it never quite delivers. Now about those ships taking a battering, it's like watching someone try to sink a floaty at a pool party. They just keep bobbing along, soaking up cannon fire like a sponge, and the ocean, well, it's a bit of a damp squib if you ask me. Sure, it looks alright, but next to Sea of Thieves wave engine, it's like comparing the River Thames to the Caribbean. It just doesn't measure up. Sailing through a storm feels about as dramatic as a drizzle on a Tuesday afternoon. Your crew is just loafing about, not a care in the world, while the waves supposedly crash over you. But you soon realise it's just an animation that's part of the ship, versus it being this living and breathing bed of water that your ship interacts with. And let's talk about the animation, shall we? Sometimes it's as awkward as watching a movie sex scene with your parents. Everything here is a bit too rigid from the way that your ship handles to your character trotting around settlements. It doesn't have the smooth flow that you'd expect, not a patch on something like, and whisper it people, Assassin's Creed. The scenery's not bad, mind the islands and towns are dressed up nice, with all sorts of bits and bobs that catch your eye, and the tropical seas are so bright they'll blind a lesser captain. But again, there's this feeling that everything's a bit too staged, a bit too lifeless, like walking into this tavern here. I'm expecting a right old knees up, only to find everyone standing around like they're waiting for a bus. So yes, the game's a looker in its own right with a fancy art style that'll catch your eye, but here we are in 2024, expecting the moon on a stick, and sadly, pretty pictures only get you so far. Where Skull and Bones really shines though, is in the sound department. They've knocked it out of the park. They've got the shouts of hollers, 
from distant ships cutting through the air, wood splintering when the cannonballs make their mark, and the sea lapping at the ship like a thirsty dog on a hot day, and the shanties, oh mate, they are the real deal. They make your crew hustle up and weirdly, for whatever reason, give your crew stamina, allowing them to do things like spot ships. For a moment, with the wind in your hair and the crew belting out tunes, you can almost forget you're in your living room and not out on the high seas and even the voice acting which leans a little bit on the side of stereotypical piratey nonsense it does end up feeling pretty spot on and let me tell you when a storm's brewing it sounds like the heavens are having a proper tantrum enough to make your ears think they've gone 12 rounds with a heavy weight playing this game with a decent set of headphones is an absolute treat and it's by far one of the best bits of skull and bones so Skull and Bones ends up being its own worst enemy. On the surface, it looked like a surefire winner, had the cash and the big name studio behind it, but that studio was Ubisoft, known more for playing it safe than taking a risk. And crikey does it show in this middle of the road pirate escapade. Despite chucking a few compliments its way, like the snazzy graphics, bang on sound effects, and a treasure trove of loot and missions, it all ends up feeling as exciting as watching a Taylor Swift sponsored NFL reel and this whole online malarkey. Jewelry's still out, lads, but what's crystal clear is the daft decisions made around the sailing mechanics. Literally, the single most fundamental aspect of the game is all wrong. Ships handle like they're schizophrenic, shooting's about as satisfying as a soggy biscuit, and don't get me started on the raiding. So dumbed down, you think they were made for toddlers. Fair play to Ubisoft, though, for having a go at something new. I said they don't take risks, but I guess to them, a new IP is exactly exactly that. I'm not keen on tearing them a new one completely because let's face it, we're all a bit fed up with the endless parade of remasters and remakes, but I'm sad to say Skull and Bones for all its towers of high sea hijinks and keeping your ship afloat ends up being as watered down as a pint with too much head. And yes, that's what she said. Until next time my lovelies, Reggie out.